We are in a world of hurt, folks. I saw this coming a mile away for a long time. And these people that call themselves Supreme Court justices have once again perverted law and fallen into line, lock, stock, and barrel with their satanic overlord leader, Obama, and those other leaders around the world for this new world order. The very idea that two of the same sex would be okay to get married goes against the very nature of marriage, the very thing that our Father, our Creator, set into motion when He created a woman for Adam and essentially married them in the Garden of Eden and told them to be fruitful and multiply. Make more people between the two of you. That was the first marriage, the first union. It is a standard for people to follow. I mean, you don't have to get married. You don't have to take a mate. You can remain celibate or a virgin, whatever you want to do. What normalcy is opposites, not sames. So what they have done is they have slapped our father in the face and said, no, we are the Supreme Court. We make our laws and we will disregard your teachings and laws. These are the same traitors that enacted the illegal Obamacare And that cases are presented before them, which they render decisions. They're the same type of traitors as what is in the Senate, the House of Representatives. It doesn't matter what name you call them. You can call them Supreme Court judges, senators, or representatives. You can call them Democrats. You can call them Republicans. You can call them conservatives. You can call them liberals. You can call them independents, libertarians, Green Party, Tea Party. It does not matter. For every one decent there are 99.99 .99 that all take their cue from the New World Order and all that it encompasses to be in the New World Order. If you think heaven wasn't watching this and it does not grieve our father greatly if you think that Jesus is not shedding a tear up there and they are not disappointed you better really think again because with actions like this you become a Sodom and Gomorrah you engage in revolting, disgusting, abominable conduct. The Lord finds this abominable. It is detestable. He cannot stand this type of filthy action. And you have to turn away. If, if you're a homosexual listening to me, or you know someone that is, you cannot stay silent about it, whether it's a family member or not. You have to speak up, because by your silence, 
not wanting to get involved, not wanting to drive this these people away, supposedly, maybe is your thought, you are playing a role by that in endorsing it. Because if you don't say anything, if you don't try to swing them back to where they should be, the, you're, con, you're playing a role in saying it's okay if they go to hell. And I don't want anybody to burn up in that lake of fire. And as long as we say it doesn't concern us, none of my business, I don't want to get involved, if I say something to my relative, it could drive them away and they won't have anything to do with me. They're lost already, friends, if they won't get out of this kind of conduct, if they stay in it. When the judgment comes, the Lord's going to have no choice. They have condemned themselves and not realized it by their disbelief in our Father, in His Son, in the Word, in the truth, the light, and the way. They are not seeing it. And we've got to do something to help them. We can't rely totally on just praying to our Father to help this situation. We have to get involved and get dirty in it ourselves. We have to fight for these people as hard as we can to turn it, turn them around. Bring it into their heart that they're doing wrong. Show them that this idea that this is love is twisted from what love truly is. As I said, heaven was watching and seeing what was going to happen. And unfortunately, there's going to have to be a punishment rendered upon this nation. See, we've got leaders that bring this punishment upon us, not each and every individual who doesn't choose to go down this road of conduct causes the, this punishment to happen. It's a section of the people. It's a section called leadership. For this high office to be setting this example and embracing it should show you just how much our nation has fallen. I mean, I do not know how much lower we could fall. And I do not condemn and pass judgment on any homosexuals. I don't like what you're doing. And I know that you're wrong doing it. But I know you're just lost. And I know your soul is worth just as much as anybody else's or mine. It's valuable to God, each and every one. If it weren't valuable, He didn't love you. He would have never thought of you in His mind's eye way ahead of your birth, creation. But he loved you enough to give you a chance at life. And that's the thing about abortion. All those little babies that are being aborted before they have a chance at life. God already thought of who that person was going to be before he allowed them to be growing in their mother's womb. It is a gift. Life is a gift from God. When two people have a child, when a mother is carrying the child, growing it inside of her, it's a gift from God, and it's not to be wasted. It's not intended to be wasted. It's not intended to be killed. 
but that is just one other example of spitting in the face of God who would be gracious and loving upon their persons. We're going to get something out of this. The Lord has to do it. I don't know how soon it'll be, but I know it's just going to be another layer on top of what we already deserved. And you can't say we don't deserve it. Many sat idly by and said nothing for years and years and years and did not stand up. against things like this. And because we would not, because we were too passive, things have gotten to the boiling point, things have gotten to the tipping point of what they are. Just like Sodom and Gomorrah, that didn't go too well for him, did it? He didn't let them get by with it, did he? They tried to find some, some righteous people in there, but they couldn't find any. Nineveh was given an option. They were engaging in practices like that. Along with many other evil practices. Nineveh took the option to repent, to stop doing that stuff, turn away from it, say you're sorry, ask to be forgiven, and don't do it anymore. And so the people were spared of Nineveh. This too can happen if the people would turn away. If they would repent. Repent means stopping it. And that goes for getting drunk, getting high, stealing, lying, everything. It doesn't mean, well, I can just do it less, you know, but I'm still going to do it. Sure, you're going to fall into sin continually because you've got evil spirits tempting you all around you 24 hours a day, 7 days a week for the whole of your life. So it is inevitable that you will sin but you should try to not do it willingly and be a part of it beforehand knowing that you're going to do something wrong. Turn away. Say no. Repent. Stand against the evil. It's what you're commanded to do. And as in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of, again of Christ. And we go to the very basic building blocks of life. <clears throat> and you can see, as, a, as many have documented and videoed before, try and show people. Designer children go, going into the very fabric of their genome, changing them into whatever you want them to be. Now they, they will say it's a good cause because we're, we're doing this so they won't have this disease whenever they're, they're born and stuff which is a very slippery slope. To be saying things like that and making it out to be good because the bottom line, no matter whether they're born with something wrong with them or not, you have entered into the fabric of life. You have entered into the genome of life. You 
are changing what God made. You are saying you can do it better. You can make an improvement on it. Engineering a human being from birth It says most of the public does not appreciate what is coming. Well, the public doesn't appreciate many things as a majority of what is coming or what has come so far. But the public is getting it forced upon them, the majority of it. Obama said he wanted to fundamentally transform things, and that is exactly through coercion or force as to what he has done. Changing the mindset of people. The way you think about things, the way you look at things. From what you know is wrong into making you think it's okay. So that you go along and get along. Satan was a liar from the beginning in the Garden of Eden. And these people, it does not matter what religious term you place upon them. You can call them Muslim practitioners of Islam. You can call them Buddhist, Hinduist, Tao, uh, Catholics, Baptists, Satanists. They're all the same if they do not worship the Father. If they do not love Jesus and admit He is the Son of God who died for all humans, for all mankind, so that they would have a way to be covered in His blood and forgiven for their wrongs if if they will turn away from them. If they will not do that, then they essentially oppose our Father. Because when you come down to it, it all goes back to the original source of the Garden of Eden. There was our Lord and an opposer, an opposition, something that opposed our Lord. So there was a force, two forces, good and evil, the father and Satan, the liar. So all opposition springs from the original opposition. You understand what I'm saying? Well, it doesn't matter how many different ones there are, whether they see it or not, or understand it or not, all springs from the original. So you can classify all the oppositions as Satanist because he was the original opposition. You see this if you read and you understand. You see Genetic manipulation by angels spawning giants. It is written. There is no doubt about it. If it's too much for your mind to accept and it blows the top of your head off, then I guess you're not going to get it and never see clearly. As was in those days, we are now technologically going back to doing these things. And we want to hop on out over here. And what we can see here is 
something that is going to encompass the world, you know, all things, and especially those involved in in doing these things. Now, if this pope has actually done this, what this article goes on to to allude to is that they signed some, they may have signed some type of document with a nation and actually referring to it as Palestine. And, and they, it says, you know, according to this, that, you know, a couple of years ago, they actually recognized the Palestinian Authority as a state. So, so if the Vatican is recognizing it as a state, and also in the article saying that they, they say it recognizes the Palestinian Authority as having authority in eastern Jerusalem, the undivided capital of the Jewish state, and what they're doing is, is um, they're actually saying it should be split into two. And this cannot be, folks. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that any of the Palestinian people die. I'm sorry there's an argument over whose land this is. It's God's land. It doesn't belong to the Jewish people. They have no title deed upon it, nor the Palestinians. God holds the title deed, and, and God signed an unsigned covenant with Israel, the Israelites. Now, for those who don't believe, it's difficult for you to agree. And that's something I'm sorry for. But that's just the way things happened and the way things are. Some people just can't accept it. And it's an everlasting covenant that's never, never going to be broken. Nobody's ever going to be able to take away what he has done or undo it. You get me? Those that try to undo it have failed so far. But he has recognized them, apparently, and signed some type of formal document to where the Vatican as a whole is recognizing it as a state. And that plays into the idea of a two-state solution for, for peace between the two. But I say to you, whoever tries to undo what the Lord has set into motion long ago, they will suffer the consequences of their actions, of what they try to do. So not only is our nation falling and crumbling, this world is falling and crumbling. The moralities are disintegrating. And in its place is immorality. The acceptance of immorality and saying it is good, it is okay, it is love. Wolves in sheep's clothing 
something that looks good on the outside but has no goodness on the inside. Something that does not have your best interest in heart but has only your worst interest in its heart. So remember what I said, you have to speak up. Anybody that you know that's involved in conduct like this, you have to speak up to them. You have to try. It doesn't mean you have to be forceful about it, but persistent. You know, be nice about how you're trying to do things. Show your concern and, and your actual love for them. Show these people what love really is. Try to get them to understand there's a price for what they're going to, to keep engaging in and what they have engaged in and how serious it is because there's only two stops after this world. When you're in the next dimension, you're either going to go to the Father in his kingdom or you will go to Satan and his hell. That is a fact. And you'll be in the Father and his kingdoms forever. And on the opposite, you'll be in Satan and his hell forever. It's forever. There's no get out of hell card free. There's no amount of time that you're going to suffer down there and then you're released because you have you've been there so long. No, it does not end. And for these people to be sacrificing themselves, their souls, for these little pieces of nirvana, that little good feeling that they get from having this revolting, disgusting sex between them is idiotic at the root to even think that you could engage in something like that for these little few years that you're here on this earth. And you're going to compare that to an unlimited amount of time called eternity where you're going to be suffering, sad, humiliated, ripped apart, tortured, everything, all of it. And you're going to know when you're there that it's not his fault. He tried to pull you out of the flame, but you turned away and you would not listen. You're going to know it's your own fault. They're going to know it's their own fault. And they're going to wish they had changed and repented. But they can't down there. They can't. He doesn't want anybody down there with those demons, those fallen angels. And that's why it's imperative for them to change. And that's why it's imperative for us people to put this knowledge in their hands, this real knowledge of love, this truth of the love of our Father and His Son. That they want all souls to not be lost to that place. They want all souls in the heavenly kingdom. And they have made a way to get there. It's all you have to do is take it. That's all these people have to do is accept it. So pray to the kingdom. Pray to the Father and the Son. Let them know that we're all sorry that this decision has happened to our nation and its peoples. And we're going to pray for every homosexual that there is. 
We're going to ask for their forgiveness because they're not. But at the same time, if we know any of them, we're going to talk to them. If they don't want to hear it, we're still going to talk to them. If they shun us and have nothing to do with us after that, then we can say with a clear conscience to the Father that we tried and they wouldn't listen. So prepare yourselves mentally and spiritually and any other ways you would find useful for what is to come. Because America is fallen. And there will be punishment coming our way. There will be financial punishment. Make no mistake on that. That is only one way God seeks to correct us and put us back on the right path. It is by shaking us up, waking us up. Getting our attention. But with things like this, there will probably be something layered upon layered that will be drastic. It could be the great shaking. It could be a, a substantial earthquake that does substantial damage somewhere in this country. Could it be California? Well, they have the makeup geologically for something large that could happen there. But you have other points in the country where this conduct is also very high. And it could come on any one of these points. We shall see and time will tell. But don't fool ourselves into thinking that nothing is going to come our way and that we're going to be rewarded for this. Because unfortunately, there is no reward for something like this. So let's pray for all the people in the world are engaging in sin that will not come out of it, that willingly are staying in it. Because if they're not praying to have that forgiven and if they're not repenting away from it and turning, they have no other people praying for them but us. And heaven can reach them. The Holy Spirit can get inside their hearts. Possibly if we petition enough, and enough of our prayers reach heaven, each person can be turned to the kingdom. There is an opportunity for that. So let's do it. It's one of the powers that we have. It's one of our weapons against evil. We are good. And the Lord is our Father. Think about everything I've said. Take it all to heart. Be very serious about it. Because this is a very, very, very seriously wrong thing that has happened. And it will bring very bad things that we are going to have to go through and endure here in our nation. And the clock is ticking for when this will come.